I know that I, I love this team. I love the the fact that I think we got good players, we got great guys, and we got interchangeable parts, but we're still not functioning. And and as guys come back, it'll change it again. My first year as an assistant coach, I saw them practice in a clinic and play Central Michigan. And then the first real big game I saw Michigan State was the first year I was out of college and they won the national championship. And my uh, coach in college happened to take me to that game in Salt Lake City. So a lot of good things happened to me with Michigan State, including my first college start. Um, and uh, and watching them win a national championship. I think it's different when you're a part of it rather than watching it, you know, on the outside. Uh, I watched, you know, the Final Fours and stuff like that before I got here, but I think when you're actually a part of it, it makes it different. Uh, in 98, we were, we went to the Sweet 16 and we lost to North Carolina and they had like six, seven pros. And, um, you know, we, we took them to the wire in a Sweet 16 game and Afterwards, we had a, a, a team meeting and um, never will forget it. At that, during that meeting on that night, which was really a year prior to uh, getting to our first Final Four uh, down in Florida, uh, we made our mind up as, uh, as a team and a, and a coaching staff that we would get to the Final Four. Best memory I have is uh Probably the Midnight Madness, you know, uh, starting off, you're a freshman, you know, you always, me, I'm a hometown kid um, from here, you know, I always go into Midnight Madnesses and, you know, that was one of the biggest things, you know, I wanted to be a part of and uh, the first Midnight Madness, you know, started the, my Spartan, you know, uh, career off with a bang. As a player, no doubt in my mind, it was uh, my freshman year hitting the winning basket and the court being stormed and uh, us jumping over the scores table trying to avoid everyone and getting mobbed, uh, that was an unbelievable uh, time. I'd say the best ones for me were definitely winning the Big Ten Championship my sophomore year and the Big Ten Tournament. Uh, Postseason, obviously that Big Ten Tournament win, that was pretty sweet. Uh, the whole confetti blasting everywhere, cutting down the nets. I've never done that before in my life, so that was pretty something pretty special. I'll always remember that. I think just that moment and being able to actually cut down you know, a piece of the net, I mean, that's a very fulfilling moment as a player because that's the things that you dream about as a kid. and. Um, I never won anything in high school, so I really didn't know what that even felt like. So I was really kind of new to that experience, but um, it was definitely a, a taste of something that I wanted to continue. I mean, it's, it's a grueling battle, and, and to win the Big Ten Tournament and get that far and win that many games just shows that you were one of the teams that were able to outlast others and keep the focus and keep the hard work and the grind on. And that's what makes it feel that much more special when you're able to cut down and hold that piece of net, wear the T-shirt and the hat and uh, just look up, smile at your family members and teammates and all the all the other family, Spartan family up there and just have everyone celebrate with you. It's a great feeling. It almost felt like a, a huge birthday party, if you will, in an arena. I mean, it was just like, it was so surreal in that moment. We had talked about, you know, winning the Big Ten Championship that entire year uh, up to that point. And, um, you know, we really felt like if we, was, we were to win that tournament, it would give us, it would solidify kind of our number one spot in the tournament, and that's exactly what it did. My favorite memory, uh, I will have to say, the Champions Classic, uh, when we played Kansas my junior year. You know, Coach had a lot of trust in me, you know, so he put the ball in my hands, and, you know, I just wanted to make something happen, you know, whether it be for myself or for my teammates, you know, and the end, the end result was that, you know, the ball went through the basket and we were able to win the game, you know, so. I mean, that was the main goal, and we accomplished it. You know, Coach walked into the locker room, you know, everybody was jumping around, everybody was so excited, you know, because, like I said, it was something that hadn't been done here in so long, you know, that we felt like we had really accomplished something, and we was moving steady, steadily forward and progressing as a team. And I think since the Kentucky game was the most recent, and that was such a fun ride, like one versus two type of game, I think that was probably the most fun regular season. But Magic came, he, Magic was talking to us the day before the game, that was pretty sweet. I mean, you just had the vibe of just a huge, almost NCAA tournament. Like, I guess I've never been as far as Final Four or eight, Elite Eight, but just it seemed like a big game like I would think that would feel. And just to get to the game and to finally start and to start the way we did. I think we were up 10 nothing off the bat. I was, I mean, I just couldn't believe that our guys were able to come out. Well, I could believe because I'd seen it in practice recently, and I was just happy that I could see them do the same thing they would do to me every day in practice. They came out hard. 
they uh, played some great defense, sat in the gaps, and we just got some easy buckets. And we were out to a quick 10-0 start, and I started thinking, well, I might get in tonight. This could be a great game. <laughs> but uh, obviously, uh, I'm, v I'm very happy with the win, and I'm okay that I didn't get in that night. But that was that was definitely another memorable experience. Definitely the carrier game. Uh, that's something that you know only a few people you know get to do, and um, I'm so grateful that I got to be able to be a part of that. And um, you know, that was just something that I'll be able to carry for the rest of my life. You know, uh, when we played North Carolina in that game, you know, it was just the atmosphere that, that brought everyone together, the excitement, uh, you know, just meeting President, uh, you know, Obama, and, you know, just playing in front of you know, all those people, you know, outside, you know, it was definitely a huge experience because, you know, I've never really played outside, you know, really, you know, a, a regular game. But so it was, it was definitely, you know, it was a special moment. Playing in front of you know, the President of the United States and getting to meet him personally, that was, you know, something I'll never forget. I mean, who gets to do that, uh, you know, for a game? I mean, that's just something that, you know, is unheard of. For that to be my first college game, you're playing in front of the President, playing out on the ship, doing something that's never been done before. I mean, it, it, it's something I'm always going to remember. Uh, a lot of people have tried to, to do the same thing and it, it hasn't been able to be duplicated because of different factors and uh, it was everything just, it was a perfect night, you know. People thought it was going to rain. We had a backup plan. Uh, we finished the game, and you know, 15 minutes later, it starts raining. Uh, so it, 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 it came off. It couldn't have come off any better. Uh, and I think that uh, people really got a chance to see something neat that I don't know if it will ever be duplicated again, just because of the circumstances. I mean, anytime you can be the first first to do something, that always goes down in history. They don't ever remember the second person. From the Breslin Center, it's Michigan State and Northwestern here this evening. Of course, the Wildcats are about as hot as they get. They've won four of their last five. And the tip is controlled by Michigan State. Nice little hook shot from about seven feet with a left hand from Costello. Now the Valentine wide open out front for a three and nothing but net. Here's Harris now taking it into the lane. Nice move by Gary Harris. Two on the shot clock from way out. Travis Trice nails a three. Trice tries to get another one. Offensive rebound, Kaminsky. Minsky just wanted it a little bit more than Jershon Cobb. And sitting on the floor with the rebound is Valentine. Great feed from Valentine to pay. And that's what Denzel Valentine can give. There, Valentine wide open underneath, and he rolls it home. It's Cobb and Trice, he shoots at the elbow, Trice takes it away! Rebound comes out to Cobb. Cobb will break to the basket, and his pass down low to Abrahams and intercepted by Bird. Down court, Trice for a three ball, he got it! Yeah! Now the lob to Costello, nice pass from Payne who throws it down. And Valentine. Answers for Michigan State, and very quickly. A pain. Answers for the three. Michigan State, seven of 12 from three-point range. seen that move out of him ever. Well, Kenny Kaminsky, the offensive board, and it's back to 16 for Michigan State. Harris. Long two for Harris. Rebound gathered up by Valentine, kicks it aside. Harris wide open for that three, and he got that one. 
Megan move to the basket, step back two from 10, yes. She's back at Chapman in the wing. Wetzel drives the baseline, shots away, no. Rebound, Wetzel back up, and it's in! Keenan Wetzel on a two-game scoring spree. Impressive performance by Michigan State as they really control this game in the final 30 minutes or so. Tom Izzo's team pulling away. A lot more points than we thought would be scored were scored, but at the end of the day, it's a 15-point Spartan win, and MSU is back in a tie for first place in the Big Ten. Yeah. Yeah. From the three Valentine, Trice, and Costello, there's, I think what's been interesting is to see the growth all three of them have had during the season this year. When the young players come in, you wonder, wow, he, he doesn't look like he could do this or that. But what all of those three individuals have done, which is pretty impressive, they've let the game come to them. Draymond Green did the same thing. Every day there was a new thing they did. And what's happened, it's always that next man up syndrome. I mean, anytime you're missing your, your two leading rebounds, rebounders when we were missing AP and BJ, um, it definitely makes you play smarter. Now you're missing Keith, one of your other scorers, one of your leading scorers. So, I mean, the margin for error is small for us now since we're down, man, but I mean, it's forcing other guys to step up and making other guys play better. Me and Travis and Matt are kind of the blue guys, you know, on the team. And, you know, we, we do all, do some of the little things, you know, um, to you know, take the pressure off, you know, our, our, our superstars, you must say. And, uh, um, you know, that's what we try to do is do the little things and impact the game, you know, as we can. No question that comes from this, the ability to play more. Uh, the injuries to other key starters have allowed them to have more minutes. And, uh, you know, for them, it was the opportunity. And they've taken that opportunity and ran with it. And you have to give those kids a lot of credit because uh, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But. You really don't, there's no fear. You play with no fear because you know you're gonna play and say you make a mistake early on, you might get taken out or you take a bad shot, you might get taken out. But now, you know you gotta play the whole game. So it, it almost, some people might think it might act, make you more reckless or make you just do more because you know you're not gonna come out. But it's almost made me slow down and, and focus in more. And they embrace the challenge, and it is a challenge because we're picked to be the team to beat. We're playing shorthanded. Because we've had a lot of setbacks. BJ, AP, Keith being gone. I mean, Trav was gone for a little bit. Gary was gone for a little bit. I was gone for a little bit. So we've just had hurdle after hurdle we've had to uh, overcome. And, you know, we've done it for the most part. Um, and hopefully this is preparing us for March. I mean, we need everybody to be successful and to make a deep run. And, and I think we're seeing that now when guys are out, other guys are forced to step up. And even when they come back, they're still going to rely on guys to stay, stay playing well. But those guys that have been in the playing group that were maybe the fourth, fifth, sixth, or fifth, sixth, seventh guys, and Valentine at one time, and now he's been a starter, and Costello and uh, Trice, I think they've all raised their game a couple notches. I mean, Trice is playing his best basketball his career, and he's healthy. One of the three starts he's had to have no turnovers, 15 assists, uh, and over 100 minutes of playing time is just tremendous. And he's a junior. Uh, I think what Travis has brought is a lot of confidence to that position. And it's not surprising that he could play this well, but I think it's refreshing to see him do well. And it's fun as a, as a fan of the game, number one, to, to watch him play well. He's such a a good, a good person, too. He's tough, pound for pound. You couldn't get a better competitor, but he's smart. You take a skilled individual who happens to be a coach's son, it's hard to beat that combination. And he's going through a stretch now where he's leading a team. He's filling in for what may be the best point guard in all of college basketball. He plays on an up-tempo team in the best league in the land. And he's not committed a single turnover as a starter. How good is that? There's just more on my plate now. Um, and it's kind of changed the way I play because now I can't really, you don't really gamble certain plays where you're, you might try something, you don't do it because you might pick up a foolish foul. And you know, I, I know every game, I'm pretty much going to play the whole game. So it's just changed my approach to the game. You know, he's running the team, you know, fairly well. And, um, you know, we're depending on him to, you know, lead us and 
um, you know, through difficult situations with handling the ball and, and guarding their um, point guard. So, you know, Travis Rowe has, you know, stepped up. For Costello, the, the energy guy is the way I like to describe him. Uh, guys feed off of that. I mean, off the court, Matt's not really that vocal, um, but once you get on the court, he constantly brings energy and he's, he, he helps you get through things. I mean, sometimes when you're tired, if you see him out there running and bringing energy and helping you, I mean, it gives you a boost of energy and that, that really helps. He has really, I, I think, probably surprised me the most of the three. Uh, and to have really blossomed with the, the added playing time is, uh, was really fun to watch. Because he played with energy, sometimes made mistakes, but to kind of put it together, we've seen the progression from a freshman player to a sophomore player who understands the game a lot better, and I think things are starting to slow down for him. Uh, I kind of had to step up what I was doing and take care of business um, as far as the big man, and I did in some games and we lost because of it. Um, and so I kind of had to grow and become more assertive and things like that. So um, hopefully I can take that now when they come back and like be a th more of a threat. Uh, so people respect me more so the other guys are more open. Costello is in the last five games averaging over eight and five rebounds and shooting a high percentage. He's why they should take all this, the stopwatches and all these things they do and throw them away. He's not the quickest guy, he's not the fastest guy, he doesn't jump the tallest, but Tom Izzo will tell you Nobody runs a break like he does. Nobody does certain things like he does because at the end of the day, if you're a basketball player and you're smart and you're dedicated, good things happen. So what we've seen with him, again, new things are happening. The other night we saw a spin move we haven't seen. He's now getting confidence and that comes with playing time and success. So there's, I think there's nothing but upside there. And Valentine has just been our all everything guy. I mean, he's done a million different things and he's done him well and he keeps improving and uh, we ask him to defend better he does rebound better he's third in the league in rebounding play the point he plays that play the four he plays that I mean he is our utility man of all utility men and yet doing a good job in each different stop along the way you know Valentine last year started some games so he was used to coming in and, and stepping into that role and it's been fun to watch him develop he's such a playmaker and when our big guys went down and we needed more rebounding, Valentine was that guy that stepped in and started to rebound. It's been fairly remarkable to watch. He's one of the top rebounders in the whole conference. And for a guy that's only 6'5", that's really saying something. Really what Zell started to do is play more under control. Um, he's always had all the skill as far as dribbling, pass, and shoot, and all that. But um, he's been more of a leader and played more under control, less turnovers. Uh, and he's just done his job. Um, and that's all coach can ask of him, and he's playing great right now, and hopefully he can continue doing that. See, Denzel's become a lot better player. Um, you see some of the some of the crazy passes he might throw before, he doesn't do that now. Uh, I think his scoring's been up. Um, he's just been a more complete player and somebody we really relied on with guys being out. You know, I was asked to step up to the plate, and you know I'm ready for it, so uh, my role has changed from you know being a point guard to you know all the way to being the power forward. So. You know, you know, whatever you know, coach needs me to do to win, I do. He's controlling his turnovers. He's becoming a, a just a solid player. And I'm not so sure if he's not the best utility player in the Big Ten right now. I joked with him earlier today. I said, you know, I think you should start at center because then you could say you played the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. But I think what we've seen with Denzel is the beginning of what could be greatness. Michigan State playing host to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. The only meeting between these two ball clubs this year. Out to Harris. Harris jump shot from the paint. It's away. Rolls around and it's good. Right. Go to Matt Costello, who's working down low. Hook shot away. Good. Here's pain. Kaminsky measures a three. He got it. Oh, Gary Harris. Gary Harris comes flying down the lane. Nobody boxed him out. Jumps up and slams it home. Harris likes that matchup against Kaminsky.
Back door to Appling, back check, good! What a pass from Matt Costello! Well, so think, here comes Michigan State. I think that was an easy call. Now to Kaminsky, wide open for a three, he got it! He's got two of them! He flips it back to Harris. Harris for a three, he got it! Now back to Harris, Harris drives the baseline, lays it up, and it's in! Harris to Travis, wide open for a three, he got it! Wow! He drives the baseline, what a block by Kenny Kaminsky! Wide open for a three, oh, it popped out, put back though is good by Adrian Payne. Valentine, first. Triple teamed, now to Valentine, now to Kaminsky, wide open for a three. He got it! Payne, lob pass goes down to him, it's him and Smith. Here comes a turnaround, jump shot is good. Danzel down the lane, lays it up, good! And he's fouled, count the basket. Oh, that was big. Kaminsky down to Payne. Payne on Pitford, spins, fires, good! Yes, Avery and Payne! Now to Pettaway, five on the shot clock, he's way out. Here comes an NBA three off balance, he got another one. I don't know what you can do about that. They made some circus shots, at least four of them. By Petway, two in the first half, two in the second, one guy's right on him. Energy is the biggest thing that uh, you need in these games, and there's been a lot of teams that aren't, aren't bringing it. And uh, that's why there's been some bizarre games.